without further ado, let me move on. I think we've got a, uh, un unfortunately, I, I think our, our next uh, keynote, um, Dr. Gary May, uh, who is the, um, the, uh, the chancellor at, uh, at, at the University of California, Davis, uh, was, um, is, was not able to be with us uh, in, in person, but he is able to be with us um, you know, uh, virtually. So we're gonna hear a, a keynote from him uh, and then uh, we'll have a, perhaps a little bit of a conversation going forward here. Uh, again, more uh, information about each of our presenters is, uh, is included in our, in our webpage. And so I'll, I'll invite you to do that. Uh, Nathan, if you can, why don't you queue up, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr., uh, Dr. May's uh, uh, video presentation and uh, we'll listen to that now. Hello, I'm Gary May, Chancellor of the University of California, Davis. I'm honored to share this message with you on engineering education the key to creating the next generation of extraordinary impact. First, I'd like to thank the National Academy of Engineering for hosting this symposium. I'd also like to thank the National Science Foundation for their long-standing commitment to advancing engineering education and research. Let me begin with a little background about my own career in engineering and academia. Flash back to my childhood in St. Louis and my early love of Lego and erector sets. I didn't know it at the time, but those were actually the first building blocks of my engineering career. Later, when I discovered the futuristic world of Star Trek and the amazing powers of comic book superheroes, my imagination went into overdrive. Fun fact, I've got about 13,000 comic books in my collection, and I still get to share my vast knowledge about superheroes as a regular guest speaker in a first-year engineering class at UC Davis called Material Marvels, the Science of Superheroes. The course explores the scientific credibility of superpowers and gadgets, such as Iron Man's repulsor rays or the Black Panther's vibranium suit. These types of things, things that excite the imagination, are so important to innovation, and I would argue to engineering education as well. Of course, aptitude in math and science, along with the basic fundamentals of engineering, are a necessary foundation. But imagination and inspiration are crucial for creating the next generation of extraordinary discoveries. My childhood fascination with Lego, Star Trek, and superheroes ultimately led to a research career focused on semiconductor processing and computer-aided manufacturing of integrated circuits. I received my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Georgia Tech, and both my master's and doctoral degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from UC Berkeley. I spent 26 years at Georgia Tech, and I served as dean of College of Engineering from 2011 to 2017 before becoming chancellor here at UC Davis. The National Science Foundation supported my efforts all along the way. In the early days of my education, I was a National Science Foundation graduate fellow. Then from 1993 to 1998, I was a National Young Investigator. And as such, funded a number of research projects I was involved with related to computer integrated manufacturing. These included instrumentation for hybrid integrated components for the information highway and a real-time diagnostic and prognostic system for plasma etching. In addition, NSF provided significant support that helped us make Georgia Tech's College of Engineering the largest and most diverse school of its kind in the nation. That includes support for summer programs and fellowships for students from historically underrepresented backgrounds. One of these programs was the Transfer Initiative for Engineering Scholars. That program provided $10,000 scholarships to undergraduate students transferring to Georgia Tech from community colleges and also provided faculty and peer mentoring access to specialized designated teaching assistants, and exposure to research laboratories and undergraduate research opportunities. During my 26-year career at Georgia Tech, I also created two programs aimed at increasing diversity in STEM. The first was the Summer Undergraduate Research Engineering Science, otherwise known as the SURE program. With the help of $3 million in grants from the National Science Foundation, we hosted underrepresented students at Georgia Tech to conduct research. Ultimately, the goal was to see them pursue a graduate degree, and that's exactly what happened. During that time, we saw nearly 75% of SURE students enroll in graduate school. Success in that program helped me win a much larger NSF grant to increase the number of African-American doctoral students at Georgia Tech and launch their careers in academia, so that they too could become role models who could attract and retain minority students in STEM. This program was called Facilitating Academic Careers in Engineering and Science, or FACES. I'm very proud of that particular program because it was responsible in part for Georgia Tech over the 15 years of that program, producing 433 minority PhDs in science and engineering, which was the most in the U.S. over that time period. I'm extremely grateful for the NSF support I received over the years. Beyond the personal benefits I received as a graduate student and a faculty member, NSF funding allowed me to pay it forward and help others by creating opportunities for women and minorities to succeed in STEM. 
This kind of support is making a difference at institutions across the nation. At UC Davis, we have two programs where we're helping to increase faculty diversity. They were created with the help of an NSF Advanced Institutional Transformation Grant. One of those programs is our Center for the Advancement of Multicultural Perspectives on Science, or CAMPOS. Since 2012, we've successfully recruited 30 CAMPOS faculty scholars who are engaged in promoting diversity in STEM throughout their research, teaching, or service to the university. The center is focused on expanding the ranks of women and underrepresented faculty. So we're creating an opportunity in our faculty ranks. This also has a ripple effect because these scholars serve as role models and mentors to others in our campus community. We know that the proportion of underrepresented populations remains abysmally low in STEM. It's been an intractable problem in our profession and I've spent much of my career working to change that. I understood early on the value of higher education. It was a core value in the May family and it still is. That's thanks to my mother who was something of a pioneer. She was among the first students to integrate the University of Missouri during the era of Jim Crow in the 1950s. Needless to say, mom endured a lot in her pursuit of higher education. During my own undergraduate years at Georgia Tech, I was often the only black student in lecture halls and laboratories. The same was true when I went to graduate school. In fact, when I got my PhD from Berkeley in 1991, I was one of only about 30 African Americans to earn a doctorate in engineering that year. I'm talking 30 in the entire United States. So I was motivated to make a difference, to, ver to diversify engineering. I think we can do better, and we must do better. Because diversifying the field is imperative if we want to build on engineering's legacy of extraordinary impact. The world needs engineers, innovators, and leaders to address some of our greatest challenges, most of which are global in nature, the environment and global warming, clean energy, food production, health care, infrastructure and security. Many of these are among the National Academy of Engineering's 14 grand challenges. Engineers are focused on solving all of these problems and many more. Engineers are also managing the future, whether it's flying taxis, homes that don't burn when a wildfire roars through, or personalized medical treatments that take into account an individual's unique genomic fingerprint, lifestyle, and environment. In this sense, engineering has a direct impact on all of society. Let me say that again. What engineers do affects everyone. So a well-rounded engineering education pays many dividends. As an engineer and higher education leader, I'm encouraged by how engineering education continues to evolve. We still teach the fundamental science and engineering principles that are needed to design, build, test, and apply systems. That hasn't changed. But we're doing more to empower students to be agents of their own success, to shape their careers and destinies. We're preparing students to thrive in an increasingly diverse and global workforce. And more importantly, we're inspiring and empowering students to do some good in the world and to create their own extraordinary impact on society. Let me mention a few areas that are key to this transformation. The first one I've already discussed, and that's diversity. I mentioned the NAE's 14 grand challenges. I would add a 15th challenge. That's to enhance diversity. And here's why. Diversity leads to better outcomes. It's at the root of innovation and technical advancement. The greater diversity we have in research, the more likely we are to make discoveries and solve problems. A wide mix of backgrounds, experiences, and ideas helps make this happen. We've seen some negative results that are due to lack of diversity. The first airbags in the auto industry almost killed women passengers when they deployed because they were tested on crash test dummies that had male anatomies. The same was true for early speech recognition systems. If you remember the early speak and spell systems didn't recognize women's voices. Fast forward to today. The pulse oximeters used to monitor oxygen levels for COVID-19 patients don't work as well on people with darker skin. We're finding that some artificial intelligence programs used for facial recognition have racial and gender biases. One recent researcher, an African-American woman, tested various facial recognition systems while wearing a white mask to hide her features. She found the systems worked better on men's faces compared to women. She also found they worked better on lighter toned faces. In fact, she recorded error rates up to 47% for darker skinned women like herself. And by the way, that researcher was Joy Bulamwini, one of my former students at Georgia Tech. Another study found that people of color are more likely to get hit by a driverless car. Driverless cars as well may better detect pet pedestrians with lighter skin than those of us with darker skin. These are just a few quick examples, but they make a clear point. Diversity as a practical matter leads to better outcomes. If there were more diverse engineers on those design teams, they may not have overlooked those particular design flaws. 
We don't just need a next generation of engineers to solve the world's greatest problems. We need a next generation of diverse engineers. Second, we're providing engineering students with more hands-on experience. When I was an undergraduate, we learned a lot about how to do things, but not a lot about why. For example, we learned how to solve a partial differential equation with certain boundary conditions, but we didn't know why we might need to know that. To use a baseball analogy, it's like we were taught how to throw, run, catch, and hit the ball, but we never play the game. Today, engineering programs provide internships and other experiential programs, as well as much more sophisticated infrastructure for learning, building, and testing. At UC Davis, our College of Engineering is creating an innovation ecosystem with numerous design clinics and programs to encourage student innovation and support multidisciplinary teams working on real-world projects. The Diane Bryant Engineering Student Design Center, named after a UC alumna, provides a space to serve real clients through leading-edge prototyping, manufacturing, and fabrication techniques. This unique environment creates a diverse and inclusive pipeline for engineers at all levels. A student startup center assists students who are interested in all stages of the entrepreneurial process. We're also building Aggie Square, a live, learn, work, play environment where we envision students, faculty, businesses, and community members working side by side. Third, interdisciplinary collaboration is crucial if we want engineers to solve complex problems. When engineering teams up with other disciplines, we can have greater impact. I'll give you a couple of examples. Mechanical engineers were part of a UC Davis team that created smart prosthetics and a novel amputation surgical procedure that helps patients better control their residual muscles, receive sensory feedback, and reduce limb pain. The team also included specialized surgeons, neuroscientists, orthotists, and prosthetists. Here's another example. One of my colleagues in the National Academy of Engineering teamed up with a medical physicist to create the world's first full-body PET scanner. Simon Cherry, professor of bioengineering, and Ramsey Badawi developed the scanner, which can complete a full body scan in just 20 to 30 seconds. That's 40 times faster than previous imaging technologies. This new scanner can take pictures of organs and tissue with striking clarity. It can also pinpoint the spread of disease or drugs moving through the bloodstream. Their research will improve the screening, detection, and diagnosis of life-threatening diseases. I'd like to conclude with a word about inspiration. Remember I mentioned Lego? Those toys offered more than just childhood fun. They offered inspiration. I imagined things I might build, and when I ran into unexpected problems, I reimagined how to address them. As engineers, we solve problems. We like to create new things. We like to imagine what's possible. We share the aspiration of building something that will outlast us. Buildings, bridges, and dams might immediately come to mind to the civil engineers among us, but I'm referring to something much more transformational. I'm talking about accelerating and advancing the innovations that make the world better for everyone. Inspiration is the fuel that can help students transform learning and theory into innovation and extraordinary impact. Engineering programs present so many exciting possibilities. It's not just about earning a degree, establishing a career, or creating the newest, coolest gadget. It's about making the world a better place. When students are equipped with the knowledge of fundamental engineering principles, with real-world experience, with skills to succeed in an increasingly diverse and collaborative workforce, and with a mindset toward making the world better, then we have truly empowered them, like superheroes, to take on the world, to be extraordinary, and to put their education to use in extraordinary ways. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. May, and, and gosh, I wish uh, we could get had, had a chance to, to meet with you in person. Uh, this is an, an inspirational uh, video and one that uh, I'm sure will be a great addition to our um, in, entire portfolio of presentations. I, I do want to at least uh, acknowledge that we have heard from two extraordinary uh, accomplished um, STEM professionals, ambassadors, I'm going to call them, uh, people who uh, we can go to to... Um, uh, to gain insights and inspiration. Uh, they represent uh, kind of the, the uh, elite class of, of our engineering profession. Um, and uh, we could not be more um, pleased that, uh, of how much and how focused uh, these individuals are on uh, improving the lives of others. And as, as Dr. May likes to say, uh, uh, judge success based on how we enhance the lives of others. I think that's a, a great uh, motto uh, and, and, uh, and creed to live by. Um, and, uh, and again, very, very accomplished uh, individuals that, that we've just heard from. 